Well, hello everybody and welcome to all my friends from around the world. This is my purchase for this week. I bought this laptop for 10 euros, believe it or not. This is a Toshiba Satellite C50B 14D, four parts. Laptop doesn't react at all to power supply. I confirmed with the seller that they plugged it in with an own good power supply and there is nothing happening when I press the power button. I have my own power supply here, which I've measured and it's 19.4 volts. And I'm gonna press the power supply just to confirm what the seller is saying. Sorry, just a bit of reflection there, but we'll see anyway. So I've pressed the power button, nothing is happening. Press it once again. No signs of life at all. Okay, let's take out the board and go straight to the screen. And this is the board after I scanned it in. So where we're going to start is where we usually start at the DC input jack. So as I confirmed earlier, we know that our DC power adapter is good. So the first question is, is our DC jack and our connection here, are these good? So I'm just going to check at the input jack and see that we're getting our 19.4 volts there. So as you can see, I have my multimeter in volts DC in the 20 volt range. I'm going to place my black probe to ground. I'm going to introduce my red probe and place that to either of these pins here. As you can see, the Toshiba's, this generation Toshiba, are really easy. You have two black wires coming in here, which is our ground, and two red wires coming in here, which is our positive input. So placing my red probe to either of these pins, I measure the voltage, and I find that the voltage is 19.40 volts. So what that tells me is that our power adapter is good, our DC input jack is good, and our connector here onto the board is also good. The next component in line is PF1 right here. And as you can see, it's marked as a five. So I think this is a five amp fuse. So we just wanna make sure that that fuse is not blown. So once again, measuring on the other side of this fuse, I place my probe here and we measure 19.4 volts. So our fuse is also good. I've zoomed in just a little because these components are very small. But after the fuse, our 19 volts comes onto these two components here. So we have PL1, which corresponds to this one here, and PL2, which corresponds to this one here. So we should be measuring our 19 volts coming through this and coming through these, so we should also have 19.4 volts here. So measuring after one of the inductors, I measure and I find that we have 19.4 volts. So our inductors are good also. After the inductors, I follow the path of our 19 volts and it goes up here and onto the drain pins of this MOSFET. Now this MOSFET is an Aon 6414A, so this is a 30 volt 8, uh, 30 volt end channel MOSFET. So an end channel MOSFET means that the gate must be high in order for it to be turned on. I'm going to mark out the pins on that so we can see here our 19 volts comes on to our four drain pins. We have our source pins over here, one, two and three, and this is our gate pin. So our gate pin should be high in order for the MOSFET to switch on and allow our 19.4 volts to come through from our drain to our source. So once again, measuring in volts DC, I take my red probe and I place it to the gate pin of that MOSFET and I find that it measures 25.22 volts. So this is high and this should switch on the end channel MOSFET. So we need to just confirm that our 19 Point four volts is making it true from drain to source. And measuring at the source pins of that MOSFET, I can confirm that we do have our 19.4 volts. And our 19.4 volts goes from the source pins of our first MOSFET onto the source pins of a second MOSFET here. So this MOSFET is an Aon 7506, which is also a 30 volt end channel MOSFET. So what we're looking for here is the gate pin. And if the gate pin is high, that'll be switched on at 19.4 volts through to its drain pins here and onto this current sense resistor. So I'm gonna mark out the pins of that MOSFET right here. So as you can see, our gate pin is this pin here. We know that we have 19 volts here. So I wanna confirm what the voltage on the gate pin is. So measuring the voltage at the gate pin of the second MOSFET, I've placed my red probe to the gate pin right here, and I find that it measures 
25.22 volts same as the gate pin of the first MOSFET so this is a high signal so this should switch our end channel MOSFET on and we should be getting our 19.4 volts through this MOSFET and onto the drain pins of the second MOSFET and measuring at the drain pins of the second MOSFET I can confirm that there's 19.4 volts there also and lastly in this section we need to just confirm that our 19.4 uh, volts is here at our current sense resistor so I place my probe to the current sense resistor and we measure 19.4 volts so this is good also so just to confirm our 19 volts is coming in from our power adapter to our DC jack through this DC connector it's going through the fuse these two inductors, it's going through the first MOSFET, the second MOSFET, and the current sense resistor, and our main power rail is absolutely fine. Having confirmed that our main 19 volt power rail is good, I next need to check and see if my 3.3 volts always on and my 5 volts always on are present. These are like standby voltages, they should be always present on the board. So, searching around I found a number of inductors on the board so I took voltage measurements at each one and what I found is that when I measured at PL303 I placed my probe here and my black probe on ground I measured 3.3 volts so our 3.3 volts always on power is also present further down the board I found PL353 and when I measured at this I found that it measured 5.01 volts so we have our 3.3 volts and our 5 volts always on power also so I guess the next step is to check at the power button there should also be a 3.3 volts at our power button and that should go to ground when the power button is pressed so let's check that next this connector right here is called JPWR okay and this is where our power button board connects in so we have four pins on it and as you can see today I'm not using a schematic because I find that it's useful to do some of these without a schematic because you can't always be guaranteed that you will have one. So what I'm seeing here is we have four pins on this. One of these is going to be ground and one of these is likely to be a 3.3 volts. And when we press the button when it's connected into this that 3.3 volts should drop to ground and it should send a signal to the super IO. I took measurements at each of these pins and what I found was that pin number 1 measured 5 volts, pin 2 measured 2.8 volts, pin 3 measured 3.3 volts and pin 4 was measuring as ground. So what I did was I placed my probe to pin 3 and I held it there and I could see that it was measuring 3.3 volts. I plugged in the power board that contains the power button and when I pressed the power button I found that it went to zero volts so if I kept it held it would stay at zero volts but if I released the power button then it went back up to 3.3 volts so the power button was working so the next question is is the super IO receiving that power button signal I located the super IO this is a KB 9012 QF and this is the super IO for this motherboard. Now we've already established that the power button appears to be working but we just need to establish that that power button signal is making it to this IC. So the question is with so many pins on this, there's 128 pins, how can we find out which one of those 128 pins that power signal is coming in on? I found a data sheet online that gave me the pinouts for this. So what that shows me is that these are all the pins and what they're for and there was also a description a better you know more detailed description of what the pins are within that data sheet so what I can see here is the pin 114 it's labeled as GPIXOD03 but this is the on off button okay so there's literally only one pin of the 128 that we need to check on this so that's number 114 and if we look at the pinouts on this Starting at the bottom here with pin number 1 and going counterclockwise we can see that pin number 114 is this one right here. So we need to check that and see if we are getting the power button signal there. 
So with my multimeter in volts DC once again, I just want to take a measurement at pin 114. So I place my black probe to ground and very, very carefully, I have to do this under the microscope, I place and hold my probe to pin 114. And when I place it to 114, I found that it measured 3.3 volts. Now I managed to hold that in place at pin 114 and also press the power button. And when I press the power button, I found that it goes to zero. And then I release the power button again, and it goes back to 3.3. So what does this tell me? Well, this tells me that the power button signal is being correctly sent to the Super I.O. So what do we know at this point? Well, we know that our main 19 volts power rail is good. We know that our 3.3 volts and our 5 volts always on power are also good. I've checked the power button, the power button is working and I've checked this Super I.O. chip here and it is receiving the power button signal but yet it's still not powering on. So either is there something wrong with this Super I.O. chip or it's detecting a fault somewhere else on the board and preventing the laptop from powering up. Now one thing that could certainly prevent a successful boot would be if there was an issue with the bias. So while I was checking voltages around this area I decided just to check the voltages on this wind bond I see here. So as with most of these bias ICs the input voltage is on pin number 8 so that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. So once again it volts to DC I place my probe to pin number 8 and we measure 1.8 volts on this. Now a lot of these are 3.3 volts but this one in particular accepts an input voltage of 1.8 volts. So that's correct. Next I thought it would be a good idea to just make sure I disconnected all of the subcomponents of the board. So take out the Wi-Fi cards, take out any of the cables coming into it, any of the external USB ports and check all of the USB ports as well. So that's what I did next. On this laptop there's a number of daughter boards like we have a plug in for our touchpad here, we have a keyboard, uh, what else have we got? We have got this separate little board over here where there's a USB and an Ethernet. So I have just plugged all these out, the Wi-Fi card, the speakers, everything else. And the only thing left in is the screen at the moment. And when I did that, I pressed the button. And would you believe it? It comes on. So, is it one of those plug-in devices that's stopping it from booting? Okay, so with a little more investigation, I found that if I plug back in the touchpad, which is this cable here, and I now press the power button, nothing happens. Okay, and now if I remove that and plug out this cable, it powers on again. So it is something to do with that touchpad. Just one quick point on this. On this cable, we have an SD card reader, we have a touchpad, and there's also a lid switch somewhere here. So I am conscious that, you know, Pressing the button and it coming on is dependent on the lid switch position as well also. But as you'll see in the next section, there is actually some damage to this board. Now if you've been watching my channel, you know that I have a million old boards and I probably have one of these touchpad controller boards. Um, but I'm just going to have a quick look over this and see if I can see what the problem is. These are the two touchpad buttons on it here, right? So this is one of them. This is one here. That looks pretty clean. Uh, but the other one, see there's a bit of dirt there, so it looks like some sort of corrosion. And then the second button, there's all sorts of uh, gunk and dirt at the button itself. Let me see if I can zoom in on that. And yeah, there's also corrosion. Oh, that's a good angle, isn't it? So I don't know, was there a spill or something on that? But I think that might be... Uh, part of the problem, it looks like something was spilled in tr on top of the laptop and I think that might be what's causing this board to shut down the laptop when it's connected in. So with my toothbrush and some alcohol, I cleaned off this board as best I could. And most of the dirt and corrosion came off with the toothbrush. 
And just to test it, I've put the laptop back together here and I'm gonna power it on again. So let me press the power. So you can hear the fan spinning. We've got Toshiba logo. And I've just put a hard drive into this just to test it because there was none in it. So you should see it booting to that. And there it is booting to it. But the screen is actually of good enough quality. I might be able to reuse that. Actually, there's a little bit of mark down the corner. But it's actually quite a nice little screen. So that, for what it's worth, is my Toshiba back working again. So that's my video for this week guys, the Toshiba is back working. Um, what I'm trying to do with these by putting up one every week is sort of evolve better techniques and sort of come to the position where I have like a really really good method of demonstrating how to get a laptop from being in a not working situation to fully working and bring you through step by step so you can follow it yourself. But that's all I got for this week, uh, I'll be back with something else next week, please put your comments and anything you want to say below or if you want to contact me directly it's the repair share at gmail.com thank you